Welcome to another episode of Risk. This is another 4 player fixed card game on classic Risk map with blizzards. Settings, Alliances, Balance Blitz Dice Rolls and 60 seconds per turn. I said beginner rank is a minimum rank when hosting this game meaning that my opponents could be ranked anywhere from beginner to grandmaster. There are no novices in this game. The yellow player is a fairly new player who only played 9 online games but won every third of them he played so far having a winning percentage of 33%, then the white player wins every fourth game on average he plays, having a winning percentage of 26%, and finally the black player wins every sixth or seventh game he plays having a winning percentage of 16%. So if we consider winning every fourth game in four player games as average, then the white player is a very average player, then the black player is quite below average, and then the yellow player is slightly above average but he only played 9 online games so it could be very hard to judge him by his stats, but the fact that he won even 33% of games he played, it makes him a really promising new to the game player who should reach higher ranks soon assuming those wins weren't just a pure luck. And this time Africa and Australia seemed as the most realistic continent choices, so I had to make the decision and pick one of them. Firstly I was more leaning towards Africa, but actually with nobody going for Australia I decided to go for it myself, so I moved out my troops from Africa. If I had gone for Africa, then I assume there would have been some tension going with the South American and European players with them capturing the continents, so there was another reason for me to go for Australia instead, go for a continent which would let me feel being safe in it and not being threatened by other players, so if I had gone for Africa, then I wouldn't have felt very comfortable. Basically Australia should prevent me from the conflicts, while the players around the Americas, Africa and Europe's area might be fighting each other. So anyway, let's just capture Australia. I hope that the black player doesn't have a 10 troop set at 3 cards, and then I have the alliances with the yellow and white players, so I doubt they would attack me into Australia even if they have a set, right? Well, I mean I can never be guaranteed. But I mean there are even 10 troops on my border but not like 6 or even fewer. What I like is that both of my allies added some troops in Europe to make it harder for the black player to capture it. Europe in this game only has two borders so it's extremely valuable, so obviously nobody would want another player let to capture it easily, as then it could be very hard to break through that player. I decided to take a deeper look at the yellow player's stats, because I noticed is that yellow is playing quite weirdly quite differently than a low rank player or even a standard player in a fixed card game would play. His moves are really random, he doesn't go for any of the continents, and puts his troops to multiple different armies around the whole map like he would be playing a progressive card game. And with the white player crushing my troops in North America and then with both of them adding their troops in Europe, I started to get not some really good vibes from them, even though they are my allies. I mean what if after destroying black, they will be looking forward to destroy me. So this is why I decided to accept the black player's alliance request and be friends with him rather than enemies. But alright, the white player invades the yellow player into Africa so actually I was so wrong about them having a very strong alliance, and that is so good to know that. But actually oh no, with the white player moving his troops out from Europe, now the black player gets to capture it. I'm not planning to attack the black player as of now though, so as a good ally I told him to attack my territory if he needs to, but this is more that after capturing it he would be rather going after yellow or white but not me. So of course I don't like that he captured two border, Europe, I wouldn't like any of the players capturing it, but with me not planning to attack him as of now, I will rather pretend to be his good ally so he would be going after other opponents but not me. And alright, it seems the yellow player is getting destroyed. He just sent me a heart but I didn't send one back because with him being so weak I want to take him out from the game. Well, obviously if the black player doesn't take him out before, as actually it's his turn but not mine. So unfortunately these cards will actually be claimed by black and that is quite bad because he is really going to get a strong position. 
so I'm just not sure if it's a winning one. If the black player manages to successfully take the white player out for 3 cards or not. As I think the black player could win the game if he gets so lucky to take the white player out right now. Or do you think I am wrong on that? I mean that of course unlikely for him to get an extremely good blitz roll crushing white's 12 troops army. And alright, the black player ran out of time anyway. And even though the black player is my ally, I still have to attack him. And I mean the white player is my ally also, and in a situation like this, there wouldn't be a great option to stay neutral. I have to look at the troops counter and help out the weaker player attack the overpowered player, as otherwise that overpowered player is going to easily win. But what I was considering in the beginning of the turn before attacking black is whether I should take the priority crushing his 9 troops army, or capturing more of his territories. And I decided to go with the first option so that would increase my chances of holding Australia. But anyway, what is the worst is that the black player got to trade in a set at 3 cards, so unfortunately the white player gets taken out by him with all of his 4 cards. So the game might be lost for me now. But maybe not yet though, because the black player made a mistake to not add troops next to Europe in order to invade after he traded in a set so I ended up receiving 5 extra troops for it. And because of it I think I will make a comeback. Well, actually I've just checked out my cards and realized that I don't have any set. So that is very unfortunate for sure, and the black player might take over the advantage again. He captured Australia and unfortunately it would be very hard to invade it, I could try my luck manual rolling him but I think I will rather capture some territories. I captured one more territory in Africa so to make his territories numbered down from 18 to 17, so he would get one troop fewer. As you know that from 12 territories you start get 4 territorial troops instead of 3, and then for every 3 more territories, you get one extra troop. And now after trading in a set, I think it might be the best for me to invade Australia and at the same time take over it as well. Let's bring him down to 11 territories to leave him with no extra territorial troop bonus. Unfortunately he does have an 8 troop set at 4 cards, but fortunately he didn't add any of them in Asia to invade Australia. And besides me overtaking him the troop wise, I'm additionally so lucky to have a 10 troop set at 3 cards. So I think now I will be totally dominating the game. And yeah, I've got this game. That's a GG. Now it's the time for the rank reveal, let's check out what were the ranks of my opponents. And alright, absolutely all of them were beginners. That was a 3 beginners battle with one grandmaster, 